Thanks very much for watching our tutorials. This is the last of our weather series. Uh, if you look at it in this first, go back and have a look at the uh, the other weather tutorials for make this too, so this one makes sense. So in the last one, we're going to look at how do we get a weather forecast, how do we put all that information together, and when do we do it, and how do we use this in relation to how we're sailing. So also it depends on what we're sailing on. If we're sailing on a large square rigger, um, a full six isn't going to be a problem. If we're sailing in a dinghy, it will be a problem. So to know the limitations of the vessel that we're sailing with and the waters we're sailing in. So there's a vast, vast range of areas we can get our forecasts. The Met Office has a great uh, computer modeling system and it will give it on the website as an inshore uh, forecast or for the uh, shipping forecast. Navtex, if you're lucky enough to have Navtex on board, you'll be able to pick up a forecast outside of VHF and normal radio range and it will display the forecast on the screen. And this will work to about 500 miles offshore. Television, we can watch it on television, it's good, but we can also look it on iPlayer and on the website. Um, I do like the BBC 24 hour and the five day forecast. The problem with a lot of the weather forecasts on the television is that it gives you a pictorial um, picture of what's going on, not a synoptic chart. And here, pictorial. And what I really don't like about the TV weather is the weather tends to come across the Atlantic from America. So it goes from east to west. The weather presenter always stands where the weather's coming from. So I'd like them to stand on the other side so I can see where the weather's coming from. So I have an idea what's going to happen um, in the outlook period. Radio, still a very good way to get it, especially long wave, radio for long wave, uh, 198 long wave. Um, you can get weather forecast up to about 200 miles offshore. And here is the uh, chapter in the shipping forecast. So the shipping forecast is broadcast and it gives the forecast in these areas here. It may be familiar to you. But if you look in areas such as Fitzroy, it's a huge area. So that forecast has to fit in for that huge area. And they deliver the shipping forecast in three and a half minutes. So to do this, they have to give quite specific language. So the change of wind direction is either going to be backing or veering. Backing is wind changing in an anticlockwise direction, for example, northwest to southwest. Veering is wind changing in a clockwise direction, for example, northeast to southeast. So when they use backing and veering in the shipping forecast, this is what it means. Strong wind warnings and the forecast, gale warnings. So a gale warning be given if the average wind is expected to be full eight or more or gust 43 to 51 knots. Strong wind warnings if the average wind is expected to be full six or seven. Full six is often called the yachtsman's gale. So timing in a shipping forecast, the leader to give imminent soon or later. Imminent means within six hours. Soon is between six and 12 hours and later is more than 12 hours, 12 to 24 hours from the warning. Visibility. They'll either say fog, poor, moderate or good. So fog is visibility less than a thousand meters. Poor is visibility less than two miles. Moderate is visibility between two and five miles. Good is visibility greater than five miles. So air pressure, a rise or fall of over six millibars in three hours is a warning of strong winds. And that's why it's important on the barometer on the boat to write it down every time we do a log reading. So if we don't write it down, we don't know the change. So a change over six millibars up or down in three hours is a warning of strong winds. VHF, um, we can get our forecast from the Coast Guard on the VHF. They give that every four hours. Um, the times of the broadcast are in your almanac and you need to write that down. Newspapers. Um, Unfortunately, they're always out of date by the time you get them because they've had to uh, been printed, distributed, you bought. So they're always out of date. And But on a quality paper on the right-hand side, it will give a synoptic chart, which could be helpful. Mobile phone, great way of getting forecast via the internet. And we'll discuss that a little bit later on. And internet, from, if you can get a laptop, um, a, much, a great place to get um, the forecast. And we'll talk about specific websites later on in this tutorial so the main office will give um synoptic charts here's black and white synoptic charts um the advantage is it takes less data to download um but it will give us the information of what's happening and what i like about looking at synoptic chart rather than a straight weather forecast it tells me what's going on in the whole area which gives me an indication of what's going to go what's been going on later on and you can do get the color synoptic chart which can be easier to read Satellite picture, which will show the cloud cover. 
which you'll tee up with the synoptic chart. And you can get a satellite picture combined with fronts. So you'll get the fronts, you'll see the clouds, and you can tee those up together. So monitoring the weather. So you really want to have a look three days before you go, start monitoring the weather, watch the TV, get a feel of the trend of the weather. The day before you leave, print out a four-day forecast from the internet if you're not able to get internet when you're away. While sailing, monitor the forecast by all available means. So you might have internet on the phone. Obviously, observation, radio, VHF radio, um, internet. If the weather is forecast, that's great. If not, get more information. So a forecast is what it says. It's a forecast. So it won't be exactly as they say. Um, if we're in a situation where the jet streams are beginning to move, um, the forecast won't be as accurate as a system where the weather is settled and the jet streams are in a settled position. If jet streams mean absolutely nothing to you, I'll refer you back to the other city sailing tutorials. OK, let's have a look at uh, some of the places we get a weather forecast from. This is Navionics. We love um, the Navionics. This is the free version of the web app. If you've got the paid version, you can click on where it says weather and tides and it will show you the weather and tides. The advantage, it will overlay over your Navionics. Disadvantage, it's not quite as much detail as we can see other websites. OK, so let's have a look at a few that we like. So let's have a look at XC Weather. So XC Weather, what we like about XC Weather, we can either put it to an area and it will give you the forecast and we can scroll down the forecast and we can have a look at it. So we can look at London and it will give the wind direction, it will give the gust, it will give the average, sorry, it will give the gust, it will give the temperature, it will give the rain for the hour, cloud cover, percentage, and the air pressure. So we can see at the moment we're in London and uh, the air pressure is quite high. And we've got a northeasterly wind which is keeping the temperature down to about six degrees. So this is XC weather for a specific place. You can put this in your mobile phone, you can do the app on the mobile phone. What I like about this part of it is it doesn't take too much data just to refresh the page if you're at sea and it will give you this information. You can go to the XC weather which gives you a page for the whole country. So if we look at the page of the country, the advantage of this is we can look at the whole of the country and it will show you in these arrows the direction of the wind. Bigger the arrow, more wind. And we can hover over an arrow here, Tyree, and it will give us the wind direction. It will give us the wind history, um, the speed, the direction, the temperature, dew point, humidity, air pressure, and it will give us the forecast for today, tomorrow, and the day after. If we click on the arrow it will give us the information for saturday sunday monday tuesday wednesday disadvantage when you click on the five days it only gives you the gradient wind it doesn't give you the gust wind so we like xc weather because it gives us a great overview of what's going on and there's a lot we can delve down and have a look at so that's xc weather next one we want to have a look at wingu what we like about wingu just pop it in your browser um, or have it as a saved safe page on your web on your phone um, doesn't take much data to refresh so quickly refresh it will give you the date each hour it will give you the wind speed the wind gusts wind direction the temperature and also give you the cloud cover so at the moment 100% cloud cover base level so it gives top medium base level precipitation and here we go if we go further on we can see it's windier here and we've got precipitation next Wednesday. So we like that bit, Wingu. What I usually do is bookmark three or four places around where I'm sailing. When I get into mobile phone range, refresh the pages, not a lot of data, and it will give me the indication. If I know where the weather system's coming from, I will refresh the page of the one where it's coming from. So give us a little bit of heads up about what weather's coming my way. This one here is great for working out if it's going to rain so at the moment it's on animation on a loop and it's showing the rain coming in so if you want to see a trend on the rain with the rain coming in it will show you so here we go this morning rain coming in over the thames estuary also it will show you here we can turn on and off it will show you lightning so if there's any lightning it will show the lightning strikes but it'll give us a trend of where the rain's coming from i find this particularly helpful um, when i'm cycling around london so i can pick my time to avoid the rain um, so the weather radar, very good for immediate forecasts. The one we like a lot is Windy. So it's just windy.com. And if you have a look at it, we can zoom in and out. So we can go anywhere around the world on it. 
and it will show you the weather and what the weather's doing. So here's where the rain and the snow is at the moment. We're sitting on a higher pressure over the um, UK. It will give temperature, air quality, and it will give you, you can delve down and give it a lot of, um, there's a lot of information in here. So if we go back to wind, it shows the wind direction. But what I really like about it is down here, it shows you different models. So we can click and change the models. Also, if we zoom in, so if we zoom in to London, click on your London or your destination, and down here there's a slider, and we can go to animation, um, and we can slide to see, say, hey, what's what happening on Saturday? Flick onto Saturday, six degrees. Um, so that's going to be quite cold and sunny, typical high pressure anticyclonic weather. So we can look at that. Also, what we can do is change down here the data forecast, or we can have a look and compare. So this will compare all the data models. So if we slide backwards and forwards, it will tell you where it's coming from. So this is from the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. Um, not so good a resolution. This one here is a model for the European Centre of Medium Range Weather Forecast. Um, clear winning compared to other forecast models. Since the model is commercial, only a few companies in the world offer it. Meteo Blue, um, which is a Swiss company, German, um, DWD, and French, Meteo France. So what I do is I can have a look, say, what's the weather going to be like on Saturday in London? Midday, this one's given me um, sun and cloud, cloud. Sun and cloud, sun and cloud, cloud. So we can pretty much say it's going to be cloudy with a little bit of sun. So if they all match up, I generally find that the jet streams are settled and they're all giving the same sort of forecast. If they're all different, it means the jet streams are moving and they're finding the computer models hard to forecast. So quite a good one to drill down on to actually see what's happening and what's going on. So, yeah, very good forecast, uh, very good information, easy to see. Also, you can look at the swell. So if you're going somewhere out like St Kilda, uh, which we quite often go in the summer with the Majestic Line, it will give us so St Kilda's out here. And we can look under waves and the swell, and it will show you the direction the swell is coming in and it will give you the secondary swell as well. So you know if you're trying to get on the beach here in St Kilda, with that swell, you should be okay. You should be protected by the island. Inshore waters and strong wind waters. So if we look at this, it tells you a brief description of what's going on, when it was issued, and the red will show you the areas with gale warnings, and then it will go through each one. So Cape Wrath to Rattree Head, including Orkney, northwesterly two to four, backing westerly, then southwesterly four to five, occasionally six in north. Sea state, slight or moderate, occasionally smooth later in inner Murray Firth, weather, showers later in north, visibility good, then outlook for 24 hours. So that's the inshore forecast from the Met Office. If we go to BBC weather, scroll down, and this here, will give you 24 hours. So after I've gone through all my other forecasts, I come here, I look at the BBC for 24 hours, but even more importantly, I'll look here, weather for the week ahead, because then they'll tell me what's going on in the week ahead. So it says here, mainly dry, settled, chilly over the next few days, but how long will that last? Um, <clears throat> they'll give a long range forecast. So the great thing about this is that you can look at it, have a scratch, wonder what's going on, and then look, look at this and they'll tell you um, what they're thinking. So they have much more time to talk to you about the weather and they'll go through, if it looks like the jet streams are changing, they'll explain the possible outcomes and how the jet streams are changing. How do we work it out? How do we work it out forecast? How do we work that out with our passage plan? It depends on what you're doing. If you're doing delivery, you don't really have much choice of where you're going. If you're going on holiday, you might have quite a lot of choice. So if we're delivering, Pick up the weather forecast. Is it safe to go? Can we do it? Yes or no. If we can do it, yep, great, carry on. If we're going on holiday, for example, if we were um, going on holiday in Scotland, you'd really want to try and have a look at 
what the weather is doing at the end of your trip. Okay, so if you're sailing, it's always nice to sail home downwind. Predominantly, if there's a low pressure coming in, if it's coming in, it'll be the beginning of the week blowing south as it goes through the end of the week blowing north. So we'll try and get prediction for the whole week and try and plan where you're going so you're sheltered um, and so you don't get stuck anywhere with the weather. You don't really want to get storm bound. Um, depends where you are, if you're in the Greek Isles or if you're here in Scotland. There's loads of places to go and hide if the weather goes bad. So if the weather goes bad, just go inland. So if there's places you want to go, plan the best weather to go to those places in the time you're going away. Yes, it does take a long time. Yes, there's a lot of information out there. Is it worth it? Absolutely, definitely it's worth it because you only need to get it wrong once and you realise how miserable it can be. So spend a lot of time over it. There's loads of information. There's loads of data. Keep me checking on the holiday and be prepared to keep amending to give yourselves the best holiday and the best experience. So that's the information on weather. Thanks for watching all the videos. Really appreciate that. Um, hopefully it gives you a bit of an insight and where to get the information from and how to do it. Um, we look forward to seeing you on the other tutorials. Thanks very much. We'll see you soon. Paul, City Sailing.